So what we do, what we're going to do now is to move on to the, the panel discussion. So this event actually broadcast live on YouTube. So uh, to our YouTube audience, so if you want to um, ask a question, uh, please treat ha hashtag SDG debate, and I'll read out your questions. So um, the discussion uh, will be chaired by Mr. Alubello. Uh, Mr. Bello has over 25 years of experience. <laughs> I mean, what? Well, yeah, sure, please. <laughs> In uh, 20, over 25 years of experience in international, uh, working on international development, development aid projects. And in, uh, so he worked in, um, in Ghana, Nigeria, uh, Pakistan, uh, Sudan, and he has worked five years in each of these countries. And I would like to now welcome our speakers uh, onto the panel. Uh, yeah. Please take a seat. So if you have a question, just put your hands up and I'll pass you the mic. I'm sitting between two, two ladies. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think now we have a 20 to 30 minutes to wrap up what has been uh, presented to us this evening, which has been very exciting. And uh, I first of all want to thank you all for the interest in coming to this uh, event tonight. I know that you are committed to do something about these issues. That's why you left uh, your evening to be spent here. I think I want to, first of all, express uh, appreciation for that. Uh, having said that, the, I want to also thank the, uh, the speakers because the presentations have been very balanced. Um, for example, I like what uh, Humphrey has just said that uh, he balanced. He doesn't want us to put, you know, some kind of. Uh, uh, he, he expressed his feelings about certain misgivings that we must address if we want this thing to succeed. I like his frankness about that. I think all of us have to take uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, interest in that. I also uh, acknowledge the experience of these uh, speakers, including our friend Nassane, who is very pragmatic and very practical solutions that he's looking for, he's, he's creating. I think this evening is a unique evening, and we also have to acknowledge that the UN is trying its best to gain its glory again. Because the purpose of the U.S., uh, when it was created 70 years ago, is to actually serve the whole world. Well, because of politics and, you know, uh, the General Assembly and the limitations, they couldn't do it. And if you see these new goals, they are trying to say that now is the time for us to prove that we are there. We want to work with the whole world, not excluding anybody. Everybody has to be involved. And as I uh, uh, said, this time around, the consultation has improved quite a bit. But we are not there yet. That's why this event is seeking your input into ways and means to succeed with these new SDGs. That's what we have. We have to use it, and we have to use it effectively. We have to own it and make contribution from the draft now not uh, during implement implementation alone from the draft now. This is where we have to have input. Like what you said and what you do, we need to let them know that that's how to implement it. So I don't want to uh, talk too much, but I want to start using my privilege as the moderator to ask the first question, if you don't mind. Is it uh, democratically agreed? 
is to ask Nathaniel what is very, very close to my heart is the issue of the youth that you are empowering through training and through hands-on doing. How did you really think this can be fed into these goals and how we can really realize this practically in terms of the, uh, the way to implement and the partnership to form, to be able to see these things on the ground. Uh, that's, uh, just keep that question first. Then the rule of the game is that I like to appeal to you, uh, the audience, when you ask uh, your questions, please uh, make it brief, as uh, he said, uh, employ the uh, system of keys. Keep it simple and straightforward, isn't it? Oh, okay, what is, so please make it brief so that we can all contribute and, and make this evening uh, a productive one. I will, uh, uh, when I've raised my questions, I need three more people to uh, show their hands and we will take every four questions and address them. Yes, can I stand up? because you are fun. I know you are okay, if you can sit down. Uh, well, I will anyway. Alan Rayner, uh, I particularly want to talk about education. I thought Nathaniel's uh, inspirational talk was really important. But I would like to say that in all these things, the spiritual element is totally forgotten. And that is just incredible. You know, just to forget God, the universe, everything, and just deal with these very practical issues. Um, I think Nathaniel's talk was absolutely brilliant in saying you have to give the pract not only the money, but also the training and how to use everything, the very practical outline. But you will never get a moral or spirit, uh, society without a spiritual training. And the problem is that there are so many different faiths and so many different uh, institutions peddling religion that uh, one needs unity. And that's why I did my doctoral thesis, living out the four major world religions. And there is an underlying unity, and that's the individual goodness. Every single person in this world is divine, is perfect, is beautiful, yes. and original sin is finished. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm coming to this side. I'm not forgetting the Yeah, thank you very much, uh, the leaders of... Uh, Universal Peace Federation to organize this uh, meeting today. My name is uh, J.C. Amone. I stand for my own company, agricultural company called Agri International Limited. But my question is based on the past experiences of different organizations and um, institutions, be it the UN or whoever, who have developed systems or calling it to go and develop Africa or to past development in different uh, parts of the world. Uh, majority of them have not succeeded. What I'm asking is simple. Is there any regulatory procedure which is going to be followed so that when the uh, 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 sustainable development goals fail, the people, the partnership can be prosecuted and the, 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 the people who are supposed to benefit out of those uh, uh, programs will also know that these people have been prosecuted. Some of them are put in jail. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I won't take any hand off the lady here. Please. Thank you. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Tokumboy Fachiroti. Um, I've run a charity organization here in, in the UK called the Lighthouse Children's Workshop Production. And we did a lot of media work. And what we tried to do was to empower children with media tools and also to take them out of their comfort zones, take them to places that they haven't experienced before and wet their minds, get them to dream large. So for instance, we took them to Buckingham Palace and they saw the regalia, they heard about what the Queen had done, and they began to dream big. Then we took them to TV stations and we put them in front of cameras and they began to boost their confidence and they did a lot. 
Now, I want to mirror something like that in my country, Nigeria. I want to take back the skills that I have here and work in Nigeria. Nigeria is suffering at the moment, not from just economic issues or social issues, but the insurgency of the Boko Haram has affected a lot of people in northern Nigeria. And whilst we have, like the gentleman there said um, from the agricultural sector, whilst we have a lot of people going in and trying to make a difference, nobody is actually going to these camps to see the horrid conditions that people are living in. Nobody's talking about the fact that people are living in uncompleted buildings with wrappers. What we call wrappers is like a material that have, they just lie down on concrete and sleep on concrete. Mm. So my question now is this. Sustainable Development Goals has come off from the Millennium Development Goals. Nobody, I don't think, actually went to these grassroots levels to measure the indicators and the outcomes that the United Nations set in the first place. So what has the Sustainable Development Goals, what have they put in place to make sure that a proper census will be, taken, will be conducted? Somebody will go to households to find out how was it in 2015 and what is it now? I'm just wondering if anybody can provide the answer to me, then I know that if I go out there, I can make a difference which will be monitored. Thank you. Okay, so one of the questions that I have is that the media was being brought up. The media, not just with film, radio, and et cetera, et cetera. But for me, my experience with the African industry has been in entertainment. I've been involved a lot with the Afrobeats industries, with these celebrities, with the Nigerian artists like Wizkid, Davido, when you have you know, different artists from Ghana, like Sarkodi or anyone, what is being done for these artists to be brought into attention to talk about sustainable development goals? Because a lot of the times, when I'm working with a lot of these artists, they're throwing money around. You see their Instagrams. They're coming to UK rather than staying in Nigeria to for work because they say it's a lot much cheaper coming to the UK. Yet they're all about flashing their lifestyle, about flashing the money, about flashing all of this. What is being done to empower the youth in that way with the entertainment? Because entertainers have such a great impact on the youth. And what is being done on that part to approach these entertainers in the African industries? to bring the attention to SDGs. Thank you. I, I think uh, let, let's take out these four questions. Five, six, seven, and, uh, then we take another round of uh, questions. I think if you want to go first. Uh, Thank you for your question. Um, and I think, I think it's a great place to actually start with youth. Uh, there's a statement which says, uh, give me the minds of your youth and I'll create an, a nation. And that's exactly um, what this thing is about. It's about getting into the mind. and. What links youth um, internationally? Um, in fact, most of the youth problems are international problems. Youth crime and violence, um, drug and alcohol, uh, you know, the sexual abuse, etc. You know, um, teenage pregnancy. These are, these are youth problems. They're, they're not a black-white thing. They're not an African thing or Indian thing. They're a, they're a global thing. And um, what we find with, with young people is that they all want to know more. They want to have more. Um, and the replication can be done to really hit on your, uh, your question, which I think was how do we kind of make this happen in more places. Um, it needs to be a multi-level approach. Um, the first company which I had, the, the Safety Box, worked with parents, worked with teachers, worked with, with the services, and worked with local government, and then worked with the children. The key thing was to get everybody aligned on the same page. Where you have, where you have alignment in visions, that means you can have greater um, accomplishments. It's like flowing water. If the water's moving in the wrong direction, you're going to have a problem. So the key thing was to actually get everybody thinking the same way, speaking the same way, with the same type of messaging. And so when we can work like that, where we have the government, um, who's interested actually in profit, the government's interested in making money, <laughs> but they've also got a responsibility to the people. Like, for instance, let's talk about rural electrification. Um, you align then. Uh, the other objective of the government, which is education, you help them with that and say, we can actually provide the training. 
where we have a problem in the rural area, we can't actually do the training in the rural area because there's no electrification. So let's get a sponsor on board, which is the private sector, which then sponsors that person to come into a city where they can be trained, where they have the upskillment of the assembly tools, where they have the computers where they can learn about the circuitry. And when you learn how to get this cross multi-level connected connectivity across all of the different sectors, that model can simply be replicated. The greatest challenge that exists is culture and how to change culture. And that's where we, I think, need to really focus our efforts in how do we diffuse the ideas into cultures that have only done it that way for uh, you know, the last 10 or 20 years. Um, to hit on the other point, and so I hope I've answered that question in terms of connecting, connecting the, job, the dots. The second thing I want to actually mention is really relating to the question at the back, um, which is relating to musicians. Um, in Jamaica, in fact, we have formed an alignment with some musicians, reggae artists, in fact, reggae artists which are, uh, have quite a conscious outlook in life. And many of them have actually championed our cause in terms of what we're trying to do. And you find that most celebrities, when you tap into them, if you talk to them about youth and empowerment of youth, many of them have that philanthropic type of thing inside of them anyway. So it's a case of who can we connect to that will connect us to them to have the conversation yeah. that will work on their hearts, that will cause them to do something. Yeah. Thanks. Um, the next one is the, um, the media one. basically couldn't agree more. Um, the way, at the moment I, I work with a bunch of charities, the way it works is you want a high profile artist so that when you do a fundraising or when you have a message or when you want to reach out, that person's face or that person's name will help you connect. Now, uh, I am a musician myself. I've, I've played for a long time. I've played with some names that I won't mention here. However, not all musicians are capable of being ambassadors or stand up. You, you listen to their lyrics, you start, you start wondering, what is this person going to bring to me? What are they talking about? They may be the biggest selling artist in their country, and I'm talking about Afrobeat. They may be the biggest selling in the world, but you sit down with them and you talk to them, and you start thinking, what is this person going to bring to me? And so, unfortunately, you have to rely on names like David Beckham. You have to rely on people who are already ambassadors somewhere else. Now, there are big artists like Yusuf Nour, like Angelique Kidjo with UNICEF, Baba Mal with UNICEF. Um, they, they're doing a lot of work. So by the time you approach them, uh, Angelique Kidjo is completely booked. So you start trying to figure out, okay, who am I, this is the work I do every day in terms of ambassador. Either they're working with Oxfam or they're working with other people, which is great. But um, it's sometimes difficult to have that intellectual connectivity with the big names. And they don't necessarily bring you the good vibes you want in there. I do understand that we need those ambassadors. We do need them. However, not always do they bring the positive message that you need. But uh, you agree that it's a feasible uh, strategy that can be, can be used. Is that what the question is trying to use? Is it something that can be used? It, it depends. And they do have, like one of the incidences I would say is with the, with the artist Tiwa Savage. She decided to change her image and go a little bit riskier, but rather than support and be like, yes, she's the first big seller in Afrobeats in a male dominated industry, they instead started attacking her for All the way right. that she was I think, dressed. Uh, so thank that's you one for of the things that I would wanted to see is about that intellectual connectivity is mm -hmm. that there are these artists there. What can we do when they do have that? They just don't have the outlets to decide who, like how do we, how do I go about this? Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Um, the, there are still on, 
unanswered questions. Uh, you, do you like to address the issue of the 17 goals that scared everybody and uh, whether there is a way around it is not supposed to be that scary. I, I'm not defending the UN. And uh, Do you want to address that briefly? Yep, sure. Um, by the way, I'm not here to advocate on behalf of whether the 17 goals are a good thing or a bad thing. I'm yeah. just here to articulate them. Yeah. Um, responding to your point, sir, basically the short answer is no. <laughs> there is unfortunately no global police force that will f you know, successfully be able to hold everybody to account to deliver on the promises that are, you know, the commitments that are made in September. Um, and that's where I think something that can draw together all of the points that have been made um, in the audience is the value of an empowered civil society. We know that unfortunately a lot of politicians are corrupt and we know that a lot of corporations are corrupt. Um, as a result, it is up to populations, communities, um, civil society to work together to hold, their to hold their governments, to hold their politicians, and to hold corporations to account. That sounds like a mammoth task and it sounds difficult. One of the first ways that we can start to do that is through education and through innovative education. But, you know, there's a huge, certainly, I, speaking from the experience of the UK, there's a huge amount of misunderstanding as to what happens in Africa, in the UK. You know, young people in the UK have very, very misconstrued ideas of what poverty actually looks like. You know, they're bombarded with images they see on the tube from Save the Children about starving children. You know, they probably would not be aware of the kinds of interesting technology that are actually growing out of Africa, not in the West, but growing out of Africa, because they're bombarded with negative press. It's our responsibility for those of us working with civil society in the UK to change those stereotypes, to bust any myths that exist, and to try and educate our young populations on the reality of living in a globalized world, and equally the same in countries you know, across Africa and Asia. You know, huge amounts of, huge amounts of misconception that if you live in the UK, you're automatically rich. Poverty rates in the UK are rising, sure, you know, sure. inexplicably. Inequality here is at it's one of its worst stages. To again educate the fact that we are living in a globalized world and it's incredibly complicated. And as a result, we need to work together. We need to work with those around us to hold our politicians and corporations to account. Um, and yeah, mammoth task, but we can do that in small ways through the kinds of initiatives that everybody here is working for. Good point. Thanks very much. Uh, I'd like to thanks a lot. I'd like to address your, your question, if you allow me, the panel. I think uh, in the goals, there is one element that came this time around about justice and peace. And I think that's where the spiritual issues will be sitting, in my opinion. They didn't write it. They didn't mention God there. But creatively, those of us working with this program should be able to uh, train people on character education and issues like that embedded under the uh, justice and peace and all of that. I think we have to be creative. That's why this audience is so broad and everybody should bring their experiences to it and we have to run the SDG as our own and not a UN property, in my opinion. I agree. I, I agree. I, what I'm saying is to get this knowledge across, we have to build it into programs and work with them and get uh, people who will also be included on the panel. It's not just the technical people and those who have knowledge about this could be part of the, uh, of the team. Uh, I think uh, now we have to take a few more questions. And I also see that before that, the organizers are telling me that a key aspect of tonight is to be able to go away with the follow-up activities that we would like to see as a group. It's not a one-time event. How do we continue it with the energy that it deserves? That is coming. I think these kind of questions should kindly address this and make suggestions. Uh, I, I go on this side first. One more question. 
one, yeah. only one. Yeah. Uh, let's make it two. Okay. <laughs> Maybe one from here. Uh, uh, a lady. Uh, okay, that that lady. Uh, okay, that hand there. Please, you, you. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And one from here, and then we'll. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if uh, the knowledge of um, permaculture uh, is is being spread, which is um, working with nature and um, uh, um, instead of imposing uniformity, um, allowing diversity as in nature. And is this part of uh, the program of development? Because that is sustainability itself. Yes. Uh, anyway, I'm not answering yet. Um, oh, so many interests in this. Uh, okay, on this side. Yes. A quick one. My name is Jacques Roger Prosset. This is Italian, but it's not. Uh, we are pressed with the address of my friend from Senegal. I am a former diplomat. I uh, visited each country many times as a lovely country. What I, I will be short. He said, according to the journalist, the keen role of the journalist is to inform. Mm -hmm. That's my friend <laughs> agree with me is educate as well must be included on that role. Inform and educate. Inform and educate. Okay, that's, I think that's when well. When we go back home, say hello to people. Mm. I think the organizers are telling me that we have to really... Uh, uh, okay, so can we have one more? Okay, uh, oh my God, yes. Please, okay, ah, yes. It's My father, who is in heaven, told me that uh, patience always rewarded. So I had a lot of patience, though my hands started aching because I had been asking five, six times. You know, to, anyway, that, that's Apologies. a joke. That's Apologies. A joke. Okay. Now, question is, question which I want to ask, which I heard from Mahatma Gandhi. I was very lucky that I listened to him when I was only six years old. I was also lucky that I could have the audience of Dalai Lama, right? And also Martin Luther King, surprisingly, right? But I really, really regret that I was not able to speak to or see uh, Nelson Mandela. Question which I want to say is in two parts. I was quite thrilled and bewitched what I heard all these learned, esteemed speakers, and yourself, sir, as well. But it comes to my mind that unless and until something happens from the grassroots and then goes up, it will not happen. I remember Mahatma Gandhi when he said that unless and until you pick up the person who is right on the lower level, otherwise you will not be able to do that. Even, Mah even Jawaharlal Nehru, who was brought up you know, as a prince, Right? He was very humble. I'm bringing to the humility and the humbleness. And the humbleness, sir, does not mean that you have to be covered. I'm not saying humility or humbleness is covered. I feel very humble when I had the opportunity to come face to face with true father and true mother. And I consider exactly the same way as I felt with Guru Nanak or with uh, if I read about Allah, Quran or Bible. Point I'm making is, would you agree or not that that should be, it should come from bottom to the top and it should be based on humbleness, humility. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, sorry, I, I need to, I, I need to say a few words before you. I think uh, one thing which I would like to urge all of us to do is to read this report. How many of us have actually read the report? I mean, the draft. I think we will send the link. Uh, I'm not saying that the, the, the draft is perfect, but it will be good to go through it. They, have, they struggled this time to address this issue that he has uh, raised about bringing it from bottom up. As uh, she mentioned, 70 countries were consulted. They cannot be perfect. But then 
we are empowered to contribute. All of these ideas, we have to be able to crystallize it and feed them back and also implement it at the grassroots level. I think this, this document this time around is attempting to do something. Let us read it and then come up with uh, you know, suggestions. It's still being drafted and they are open to suggestions this time around. I think the last point that we want to agree before we leave tonight is uh, we want to follow up this effort. It's not a one-off uh, uh, event, but uh, the 17 goals have been you know, split into six areas, clustered into six areas. We would like to see as a community here, which of those parts would we like to focus on? For example, peace is very crucial to the forum here. The issue of women, of course, the issue that uh, the press can really help us to bring out all the, all the anomalies in the field and get results. These are issues which I would like us to discuss maybe in the next, uh, uh, in the next uh, event, but it's very essential. Would you like to say something about that? Yeah, I know you all have a lot of questions and we haven't got the time to go through of them, but we can meet up again for another discussion where you, your questions can be asked. Yeah, uh, I just want to say, uh, I want to give a round of applause to our speakers for, for just stimulating discussion. <laughs> I also want to thank my team, uh, Mr. Bello, for, uh, did, he did a really good job today uh, chairing, this, chairing the, this, this discussion. And also, uh, David, he's, he did a uh, fantastic job broadcasting this on YouTube, so more people can participate. And also, uh, Mr. Robin for um, putting this together, and Christina going to write a report uh, on this after the event. And Lauren, but she has left today. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, Should the yeah. report be emailed to the members? It will be. Yeah. It will be. Um, it will be published on the uh, Universal. Universal Peace Federation website, and yeah, and also on our social media. Uh, yeah, and uh, and thank you all for coming today. So uh, we, you can stay for a little bit longer for networking. And uh, if we, if I haven't spoken to you, and you know, I would like to meet everyone in this room. Uh, <laughs> if I didn't get a chance to speak to you, uh, so please come out and talk to me and tell me what you want to see in uh, in these type of events. Uh, on the sustainable development goals. And yeah, thank you for coming today.